What's up everybody? It's T back with another movie review. I just saw Trumbo and I have to say after seeing this, Oscar season is on. Yeah, we're sort of slipping into the biopics and historically based, real event based movie season of the year, which is also known as Oscar season. And Trumbo is definitely going to be a contender. I really, really enjoyed this movie a whole lot. Brian Cranston is great as always. He plays the titular character. He plays Dalton Trumbo, who if you're unfamiliar, he was a screenwriter in Hollywood, at one point the highest paid screenwriter in Hollywood, who was also a known communist. You know, he was publicly known to be a member of the Communist Party and he was working in Hollywood during the rise of McCarthyism and the whole witch hunt that it became to single out communists because they were seen as enemies of the United States and allies and spies of Russia. So the movie sort of centers around the whole rise of that witch hunt in the 1940s and into the 50s led by Hedda Hopper who's played by Helen Mirren and she's excellent of course. I mean basically she's an absolute in the movie and it totally works because she is the one who's ruining these writers lives they essentially became known as the Hollywood 10 it was roughly 10 uh, major screenwriters in Hollywood who were blacklisted because of their affiliations with the Communist Party it has a lot of parallels to things that go on today where people are singled out because of their political or religious or whatever beliefs and that has nothing to do with their ability to do their jobs so I think in that way it's a very prescient and interesting film the, across the board all the performances are great you've got Helen Mirren Brian Cranston Louis C.K. is actually in it as well and I feel like he sort of graduated from what we saw him do in American Hustle where we got like a little taste of him playing a role and not really being just a funny guy because full disclosure here Louis C.K. is probably my favorite person on the planet so it was really great to see him actually showing some real acting chops and doing a great job At a lot of times I almost felt like there might have been lines that he improvised or lines that were written re or maybe rewritten for him once he got the role but it really sounded like it was his own voice now at times it get a it did get a little tricky with Brian Cranston because Trumbo is sort of an eccentric guy. He, he was. I mean, there's photos of him on his typewriter in his bathtub, like smoking a cigar with like scotch next to him. So he definitely had his own peculiar way that he liked to work. With a lot of those peculiarities, he's, he very much seems like a character fixed in the time when he was living. But Louis C.K. at certain points, except for his costuming, seemed a lot like a guy who might be around right now. So there was just sort of a little bit of a disconnect there in terms of their delivery and their sort of cadences and how they delivered their lines. But overall, I think the acting was there. Elle Fanning plays Trumbo's daughter and she does a fantastic job. Elle Fanning is someone who you sort of don't hear about a ton, but when she's around, she's really doing a great job and giving her older sister a run for her money. Alan Tudyk is great as well. He plays uh, an actual uh, screenwriter, Ian McKellen Hunter, who basically was the front name for Roman Holiday, which Trumbo actually wrote in real life. So there's a lot of really interesting historical events that we see happen. Once Trumbo is ultimately blacklisted along with the rest of the Hollywood 10, we see him having to deal with the consequences of that and being unable to work and having to testify before Congress, having to write really, really shitty B movies, you know, for King Studios, which is run by John Goodman in the movie, under assumed name so that no one knows that he's actually working. And the movie also really deals really well with some of the inherent hypocrisies of Dalton Trumbo being this extremely well-paid Hollywood writer with a house on a lake who's a communist. It's, it, you know, there is a sort of inherent hypocrisy there and I think Lucy C.K.'s character does a really good job of raising the question of are you just a rich guy who's really just into these virtue, virtues as an idea or are you someone who would give it all up and adhere to these beliefs for real. So overall, I think it asks a lot of really important and interesting questions. It gives us a really cool look inside of what it was like to be in Hollywood at the time of McCarthyism and the whole blacklisting and people naming names. We get to see these sort of dramatic reenactments also of, uh, you know, just critical turning points in how that all came to an end. If you were interested, I say go ahead and see it. If you weren't interested, I say go ahead and see it. It's definitely on my top 10 movies of the year. I feel like this has been a really strong year for movies overall, you know, running the gamut from Mission Impossible to Ex Machina to now this. So you've got a real spectrum of great movies that have come out this year, but I really think that this is kicking off Oscar season. It's a little premature to say for sure where the Cranston and the film will be nominated, but I'm going to call it, I'm going to say, probably. Thanks for watching so much. Make sure you guys subscribe to Cinefix for more of the other stuff that we do, and that's it.